Okay, there we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, good, there. <laughs> Excellent. <clears throat> good evening, everybody. Welcome to Backlog Day, where we are playing Lamplight City, which is a wonderful uh, indie game by Grundislav Games, also known as Francisco Gonzalez. And uh, yeah, we're all about the steampunky, detective-y, crime solve goodness tonight. As we have been every Tuesday for a few weeks now. Uh, yep, got my chat window, got everything running, looks good. Let's go. Alright. So, I believe we were closing in on the end of the second case. Uh, let's do a quick recap. Right. Charles Harris, Imp and Son, kidnapped. We have Malcolm Harris, as in his, his own father, uh, as a suspect. We also have Arthur Devins as a suspect. But um, the other major suspect I have is, uh, what's her name? Linda Davis, I think is her name? No, Lin Linda Walker. Um. Ah, right, yes. Yeah, so uh, Linda's journal de details her belief that Charles Harris is the reincarnation of her dead son, Alexander. She intends to kidnap the child and reclaim him as, as her own. Uh, there was also a strong implication that she act actually killed her own son, accidentally, I think, because she was trying to kill her abusive uh, husband, um, I believe. Um, but her son uh, accidentally ingested the poison as well as her husband. Um, so that was not great. <laughs> and she believes that her son has been reincarnated uh, in the body of Charles Harris. So pretty sure she's the one who kidnapped him. A receipt for a one-way train ticket to Pierre was found on the floor of Linda's apartment. It departed this afternoon, so there may still be time to intercept her arrival. Linda Walker wrote down Valerian plus chamomile equals the perfect sedative. Could she have drugged Mrs. Davis's tea? Probably. Uh, okay. Uh, I want to talk to her for... I have some questions for you, Mrs. Davis. Some reason. All right. Oh, yeah, I wanted to see if... Uh, yeah, the drug tea. That's what I wanted to talk to her about. Mrs. Davis, where did you get the tea you drank on the night of the kidnapping? From my own private supply. I drink a blend of hibiscus and elderberry. It clears the mind and puts me more in tune with the spirits. Did it taste off to you? No. Why do you ask? Because I think your tea may have been drugged. <gasps> Wait, are you saying? I believe Mrs. Walker used her own herbs to drug your tea, knowing you'd drink a cup the following evening. She then snuck into the house after you'd fallen asleep and took the child. Oh my word, I never would have thought. I know, Mrs. Davis, but don't worry. I'm doing everything I can to find her. Oh, may the spirits guide you, Mr. Fordham. Thank you for your time, Mrs. Davis. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, I'd say we have everything we need to prove it was Linda who drugged Mrs. Davis's tea and took the child. And we know where she's going, too. Upton will want to know about this as soon as possible. Yep, I believe you are right. That may be the only thing we needed to do before finishing up this case. Hey, I'll Great be going Star. Now, Mrs. Davis. May the spirits guide your path. Madame Gretch. <laughs> Lady Gretchen. <laughs> Milady. <laughs> oh God, I feel dirty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so. 
I actually do have a hat. Well, do I even still have that hat? I might have gotten rid of it. No, I think I still have that hat. Yeah, I think I still have a... It's not quite a fedora, but it's close to one. <laughs> so I could wear that. <laughs> but I'm not gonna. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's do this. Can we talk? Go on, I'm listening. I'm ready to wrap this case up. Okay, who's your prime suspect? Linda Walker. It was Linda Walker. Who is she? A seamstress who befriended the Harris family nanny. She took the child because she believes he's the reincarnation of her deceased son, whom she accidentally poisoned. My God. You'll find a journal explaining her motive at her apartment, as well as the plants she used to drug Mrs. Davis. But what about the broken window in the nursery? All part of a false crime scene she set up to draw our attention away from her. Excellent work, Miles. Did you manage to find out where Mrs. Walker is now? Yes. I found a receipt for a one-way train ticket to Pierre, which departed this afternoon. Fantastic. We can send a telegram to the train station and have her arrested upon arrival. You've Perfect. done extremely well, Fordham. Snelling could only hope to have a detective as good as you again. You flatter me. <laughs> then I'd better stop before your head gets any bigger. <laughs> All right, Miles. I'll go through the proper channels and report your information as an anonymous tip. And of course, I'll dip into the department's Good Samaritan Fund to get you proper compensation for your work. For now, go home to your wife. I'm sure I'll have something else for you to look into fairly soon. My awesome wife. Welcome to Lorraine. An awfully cute baby you got there. Oh, thank you, sir. This is my son, Alexander. Alexander? That's a good name. Strong name. Yes, thank you. I, I don't mean to be rude, but I'm in a bit of a hurry and I need to get to my hotel. Of course. I won't keep you any longer, Mrs. Walker. Thank you. I... <laughs> Wait. How did you know my name? I didn't. It was a lucky guess. But now, seeing as I know your name, <laughs> allow me to tell you mine. I'm Sheriff Zeke Dollarhide. Dollarhide. Linda Walker? You are under arrest for the kidnapping of Charles Harris. Surrender the child and come with me. No, no, you've got it all wrong. This is my son. This is my Alexander. Ma'am, please don't make this difficult. Come along to the station and we'll get this all sorted out. Yeah, she went to the... Um, what's it called? Addie, are you home? Uh, Carmen San Diego. Still at her appointment, it would seem. You know, Miles, I have to say, I'm proud of you. Why is that? It's because you actually listen. So does this mean you'll keep quiet until morning? I said I was proud of you. I didn't say you were getting a reprieve. I thought we had an and agreement. I need to figure out how I'm going to sleep through the night without the soporific. You worry about that too much, Miles. You can sleep when you're dead. Dude! You don't ever seem to. <laughs> That's because I slept quite enough when I was alive. I need sleep! In any case, I need to clear my head. The best way to do that after a case was always going for a drink at the Angel. The Angel? But you haven't been there since... Since you died. But perhaps getting back into old routines will help. Hmm... Perhaps. It would be nice to see old Patrick again at the very least. Then it's settled. A drink or two at the Angel, for old time's sake. Sweet. Come get Kronk. <laughs> yeah, uh... Belatedly. I have to say, it's Oops. been a real pleasure having you back, Miles. I was worried about you. I appreciate your concern, Patrick. The past few months have been a bit rough, but it's good to be back in familiar territory. Miles, can I ask you something? What is it? Well, it may be none of my business, and you can feel free to tell me to stuff it. Enough with the preamble, Patrick. Just ask. I know you quit the force, but why are you still working as a private investigator? Why not leave all that detecting stuff behind? Yeah, the Fallen Angel. <laughs> I don't think they mentioned that before. Uh, belatedly, hi, ATM machine. And yeah, I'm, uh, the game doesn't seem to have been having much of a problem with stuttering anymore, which is great. And yes, let's, let's hope it stays that way. Uh, eh. It's all I know. My grandfather was a cop, my father was a cop, so I became a cop. Hey, my That's fort. just how it went. Oh, I hear ya. I come from three generations of butchers myself. But I broke the streak because I can't handle the sight of blood. <laughs> if only that had been true in my case. Now then, 
Will you be wanting another drink? Hmm, I'm... I'm not sure. I've already had two. I should probably be getting... Wait a minute. Patrick, do you hear something? No, Miles. I don't hear anything. Neither do I. Huh. <laughs> another gin, if you please. Huh. <laughs> Coming right up. Yes, drink the ghosts away. Uh-oh. Shadowy figure. Hmm. I must have taken a wrong turn back there. Hopefully Addie won't hear me come in. Uh, save. <laughs> Who are you? Excuse me, sir. Could you spare a shilling? Um, yeah, sure. Here you are, my good man. You always were willing to help the less fortunate, weren't you? It's probably the murderer. Perhaps you should start thinking about helping yourself. It's totally him. I beg your pardon? Just look at yourself. I may be a beggar, but even I feel sorry for you. Your voice. I've heard it before. Yes, that's right. I'm your biggest failure. What are you talking about? Come now, Miles. You're not completely stupid. You think finding and catching me is going to make things better? <laughs> I don't know. It might not, but at least I'll have closure. Again with the lying to yourself. Let's say you do find me, and this grand chase finally ends. What do you do the next morning? You still have a dead partner, no real job. Your wife knows you've been keeping things from her. Even if you solve a hundred cases, it won't relieve that empty feeling inside. <laughs> What's your point? I'm all you've got, Miles. Once I'm gone, there'll be nothing left. He's the Joker to my Batman. So just admit it. <laughs> you don't want to find me. Not really. I... <gasps> no. <laughs> Bad dreams? Uh, you could say that. Ah, oh, my head. How many drinks did I have last night? <laughs> You're asking the wrong person. I was out after the first one. <laughs> it seems Miss Maxwell was right about the effects of spirits. Go figure. Yeah, well, let's not make a habit out of it, all right? Well, it's either this or the soporific, so... I don't know. Lesser of two evils, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yep. That was what Maxwell said. Uh, so, you're up at last. In the previous case. Is something the matter, Addie? Oh, I see. You don't remember last night, do you? Uh-oh. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I'm guessing whatever happened last night didn't put me in your good books. That's putting it mildly. Uh, what happened exactly? It was nearly two when you burst in here, soused to the eyeballs from God knows where. I imagine you've probably forgotten that too. You were muttering something about peace and quiet and then proceeded to relieve yourself on my begonias <laughs> before stumbling into bed. Charming. I salute you, O oh Vice Admiral of the Narrow Seas. <laughs> Good God. Uh, how embarrassing. I'm so sorry, Addy. I don't know what came over me. I don't either. I've never seen you in such a state, and I pray that I never will again. I should apologize to the begonias, too. <laughs> I just bit off more than I could chew last night. I promise you, it won't happen again. What possessed you to go out and get so drunk, anyway? I decided to stop taking the soporific. It was interfering with my ability to focus on cases. I thought perhaps having a drink or two would help me sleep, and I got a bit carried away. I see. Well, I'm at least glad you've stopped taking that terrible medicine. But trading it for alcohol? This had better really be a one-time occurrence. Anyway, you got another message from Upton. It's there on the table, if you're feeling fit for the world now. The, uh, the... Yeah, uh, the, the fourth wall voices my... is, um, William Legere. My former partner who died uh, at the beginning of the game. So, I have a ghost in my head. 
which is nice. <laughs> Addy? What is it, Miles? Addy, please know that I'm deeply sorry for my behavior last night. I'll do everything I can to make it up to you. Would you like me to get some new begonias? I don't need pretty flowers or pretty words, Miles. I just want things to go back to how they were. That's really all the apology I require. You're looking especially lovely today, Addie. Miles, don't flirt with me. Not now. Aw, I wouldn't push my luck with her, Miles. She hasn't completely forgiven you. What have you been up to lately? Nothing particularly exciting. My usual clients have been scheduling appointments and I've been trying to get some new ones as well. In my free time, I've been catching up on my reading. Anything good? Yes, the conclusion to the dissembling mechanism was just published <coughs> in Brentwell Magazine last week. Excuse me. What's that? James Penstroke's latest serial. I wanted to read it to you, but you haven't been around much lately. Perhaps I'll take a look now that I can actually concentrate again. Yes, you could read it to me. I wouldn't mind hearing it again. It would certainly be a nicer way to spend your time than going out drinking. I'll let you get back to your book. Hmm. Should I keep complimenting her? <laughs> Addy? Let's see what happens. What is it, Miles? I might get an achievement, or I might just piss her off completely. <laughs> Please let me see that beautiful smile of yours, Addy. That's enough, Miles. If you're just going to stand there and throw meaningless words at me, you're better off not saying anything at all. But... Stop it. I'm trying my best to move past this. Don't make it worse. You've mucked up things enough with her for now. <laughs> Best to leave her be until some time passes. All right. <laughs> Hang on, where are you going? Oh, you right. You always Oops. get all the facts before starting your investigations. Right. Thank you. Thank you for the reminder. Check newspaper, check uh, things. All right. Harris may be found. Suspect in custody. Charles Harris, infant son of Malcolm and Miriam Harris, was kidnapped days ago from his crib at the Harris family manor. Police investigators determined that Linda Walker, a friend of the baby's nanny, was the kidnapper. Walker was arrested in Pierre Lorraine after fleeing New Britannia with the child. Charles is second in line to inherit the Harris Construction Company, a large contractor in New Britannia currently building the HMS Lenore, the airship intended to replace the fallen Lygia. Chief of Police Reginald Snelling issued the following statement. My detectives should be commended for the outstanding work they did in finding baby Charles and bringing him home safely. Let this be a lesson to all criminals that the New Britannia police always get their suspect. Yeah. Except I'm technically not one of his detectives, so... Boo. <laughs> oh, okay. So, I mean... Do you want... Did you want to, uh... Keep playing... I mean, because, I mean... I'm, I'm gonna keep playing, but, uh... If you don't want spoilers... I will understand if you don't want to watch. Gascon Grand Dame found burned to death. Oh, great. Desiree Latham, age 63, was found burned to death in her home yesterday morning. Police were called to the scene by a neighbor who smelled smoke, only to find the grisly scene. Miss Latham in her bed, body burnt to ashes. The circumstances of Miss Latham's death are unknown, but the police have not ruled out the possibility of foul play. Latham was born in New Britain. Uh, eh, in New Britain. Oh, I just realized. Okay, Latham, not Latham. Latham was born in New Britannia, the daughter of a wealthy plantation owner. She grew to become one of the most loved and respected of Gascon Grand Dames. Although she had many suitors over the years, Latham never, ma never married. An avid reader, writer, and poet, Miss Latham had several articles published in local newspapers and magazines. Residents of Gascon said they would miss seeing her in her brightly colored hats and dresses as she walked by. Right, yeah, I remember you mentioning that. But it's okay to fail. That's the whole point of this game. I know that doesn't help. Third mysterious murder has police on edge. Yet another murder in, Ch in Chumley has the New Britannia police scrambling to quell rumors. Chief of Police Reginald Snelling vehemently denied there is a mass murderer stalking the shadowy corners of Lamplight City. We have no indication whatsoever that these recent Chumley murders are in any way linked. In any case, detectives are working their hardest to make sure the killer or killers are found and brought to justice, he said. The Gazette has learned that the latest victim is Ennis Bowditch, a construction worker. Police were called to his home, where they found him with a single gunshot wound to the head. Despite Chief Snelling's claims to the contrary, the previous two victims have also been men in Chumley who have been killed in exactly the same manner. The Gazette will continue coverage of this story as more details emerge. 
I keep bringing up this, uh, this, this serial killer, whatever, whatever, whatever's going on there. I'm sure I'm gonna have to, uh, solve that eventually. And I bet this is gonna be my, gonna be my next one. Prime Minister's campaign heats up as, ca as election looms. With election night less than a month away, Prime Minister Herbert Atwood is lashed out against his opponent with full force. My opponent, Mr. Leroy, if elected, will push this country back at least 20 years. Atwood went on to describe how Leroy's refusal to acknowledge the existence of, e of ethericity, as well as his lukewarm stance on steam technology, would be detrimental to Vespuccia's progress. Leroy, meanwhile, continued to chastise Atwood for his prioritizing machines over humans, saying that if he is re-elected, unemployment rates will skyrocket when most workers are replaced by automated machines. The latest public opinion poll shows Atwood with a comfortable lead, however many have criticized the polls for not including the majority of the workforce, Leroy's strongest supporters. Continued on page 12. All right, message. Fordham, a new case has come in, but the police are already investigating. Details have made their way into the newspaper. I won't be able to meet you at, at, at Ruins. Uh, I cannot remember how to pronounce that name. R Ruen, or, uh, sorry, my French is terrible. So here are the details. The deceased is Desiree Lathan. Her apartment is at 840 Right Way. Good luck, C. Upton. Huh. What does Upton say this time? That she can't meet me and that I should go straight to the scene of the crime. I wonder if that means the police have started to suspect that she's giving you these cases. <laughs> she also says news of this case has been made public. The police are already investigating. It explains the article in the newspaper. Which one? The one about Desiree Lathan, the woman who was oh, found Lathan. burnt to death. Oh, that sounds absolutely dreadful. Where's the crime scene? 840 Right Way. It's not too far from here, thankfully. You're sure you're feeling up to this today? I'll be fine. The mental exercise will get me back to normal in no time. Heck yeah. Well, this is shaping up to be quite the investigation. I should probably get a move on before the police ruin the crime scene any more than they already have. Good luck, Miles. And stay away from the bars, would you? Yep. <laughs> Objective. Stay away from the bars. <laughs> Alright. Current case. Burning desires. Desiree Lathan was found burned to ashes under mysterious circumstances. Was that an accident or something more sinister afoot? Investigate Desiree Lathan's apartment. I wonder if this is going to be, um... Is going to have anything to do with the, uh, spontaneous combustion we were reading about last time. <laughs> time for me to get some things done. Goodbye, Miles. <laughs> All right. Let's go. Looks as though we've arrived fashionably late. Excuse me, sir, but this is an active crime scene. We can't allow members of the public. Oh, this isn't just any member of the public, Kane. This is Miles Fordham. Used to be one of us, until he got his partner killed. Oh, shut your face. Wonderful. Officer Parsons is on the scene. It's a shock the apartment isn't in a shambles. Good day to you too, officers. Fordham? What are you doing here? Ah, Captain Snelling. What a pleasure. That's Chief Snelling now, Fordham. I don't expect you follow the workings of the department much these days, but I'd appreciate the proper address. So nice to see the power hasn't gone to his head. <laughs> my apologies, Chief Snelling. You haven't answered my question. What in blazes are you doing here? Uh, <laughs> uh, that Kane guy is uh, Dave Gilbert. Uh, voiced by Dave Gilbert, who is the... Um, the, the primary dude behind Wadjadai Games. The writer and designer of most of their games. You want this crime solved, don't you? I'm conducting my own query. I could be an asset to your investigation. Out of the question. This is an active crime scene, Fordham. Leave the premises immediately. We could solve this case in no time if we work together, you know. We don't need any help. Not even from former detectives. Parsons, I'm going back to the station. I want your report the minute you're done here. Understand? Yes, sir. Now, don't get any funny ideas, Fordham. If you so much as breathe on anything in here, I'll have you arrested for tampering with the crime scene. Do I make myself clear? All right. Um. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear this game is not uh, not to your liking, but you know, to each their own. 
Sure, whatever you say, Chief. Keep your nose where it belongs, or you'll have me to answer to. I suppose it's reassuring that even in this crazy, ever-changing world, you can always count on Snelling to be a complete ass. You heard the Chief. No snooping around. The sooner you get out of here, the better for all of us. Hmm. <laughs> Definitely too young to be Miss Lathan. Perhaps a relative? You have to hand it to her. Miss Lathan certainly had a unique taste in fashion. I bet you could see her coming a mile away. No, no, don't apologize. It's totally... No, I, like, I get it. If you're not... If you're not comfortable, you're not comfortable, and you should definitely do whatever you need to do to, um... To, uh, take care of yourself, so. I will see you around, then. Thank you for stopping by, as always. Hmm, no title. I doubt it's a diary. People rarely leave those things laying out in the open. Judging by these books, Miss Lathan was quite the fan of poetry. Let's just hope her taste was better than Madame Dupre's. <laughs> An invitation to the Gascon Grand Am's Ball. It seems it was held two nights ago at the Gascon Supper Club. Might be worth looking into, seeing as it's our only lead right now. Seems fair. Excuse me, Officer Parsons. Clear off, Fordham. The Chief doesn't want you here, and neither do I. You aren't on the force anymore, so you've got to respect the rules, just like every other citizen. He'd be respecting my fist if I were alive, believe me. I'm not trying to cause I any trouble. Him. I just want to ask a few questions. Well, if it will get you to leave faster. Sweet. You're looking well these days, Parsons. What's your secret? Secret? I don't know. Maybe something about getting a good night's sleep without blood on my hands does wonders. Shut up. Have you made much progress on this investigation? Drop it before I have to arrest you for interfering with a police investigation. What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? Nothing. Because you don't know? No, because I'm not going to betray Chief Snelling's orders and divulge that information to the public. Come on, Parsons, you know me. What harm would it do to tell me just a little bit? Do I have to state the obvious? If it were up to me, you'd be in jail for murdering an officer. I wouldn't make such claims without knowing the facts, Parsons. It could get you in serious trouble. With It'd be fist. a real tragedy to see your career cut short and you back in the workhouse polishing airship rivets. Ooh. You don't scare me, Fordham. Rest assured, the feeling is mutual. <laughs> How long has Officer Kane been on the force? I'm not one to gossip, Fordham. That's only the second most hypocritical thing I've heard today. <laughs> Ask him yourself if you're so interested. Those are indeed some, some powerful chops. Why was Chief Snelling here anyway? He's the chief of police, and this is an official investigation. It doesn't take a grand leap of logic. Yes, but the chief of police never bothers with a crime scene unless it's of great importance. Your point? Does that mean this crime scene is, in fact, of great importance? You're the investigator, Fordham. I'll leave you to work that one out. That's all I wanted to know. Good. One plus one equals two. The bedroom is probably full of clues. We need to find a way to get in there. Begging your pardon, officer. Yes, what is it, sir? How long have you been on the force, officer? Two months, sir. And how's it treating you so far? This is where I was meant to be. That's oh. good to hear. Parsons mentioned you used to be a detective? I was, yes, for 15 years. It wasn't always easy, but I loved every minute of it. Parsons goes on about how he's got his eye on becoming a detective, but I don't know if I'd be able to handle it. Is that right? Yes, he's up for review. I think he's trying to impress Snelling to improve his chances. Parsons wants to be a detective? <laughs> now I've heard it all, as if he needed more of a reason to be Snelling's lapdog. Do you enjoy working with Officer Parsons? I... I don't like to talk about my colleagues, sir. <laughs> Especially when they're standing right over there. I understand. <laughs> Perhaps this isn't the right time to be asking. I think the answer to that question is no. <laughs> is there anything you can tell me about Desiree Lathan? 
I'm afraid not. You don't have clearance in this investigation. And there's nothing I can say to convince you otherwise? My superiors would be very upset if they knew I was breaking the rules. I'm sorry. I think the operative phrase in this instance is if they knew. <laughs> we need to find a way to get Parsons out of here. Maybe we should visit Upton at the station. Hmm. What was Chief Snelling doing here? Nothing more than a routine inspection of the crime scene. Routine inspection? But the Chief of Police only goes to extremely high-profile crime scenes. I couldn't possibly comment on that, sir. Thanks for your time, officer. Not a problem. All right, cool. So we have a uh, we have two leads, I think. Let's get investigating. See what we can do. Police station, the supper club. Let's go to the supper club first. Look at that hairdo. That painting depicts a hand dropping a bunch of blood-soaked silver coins into another hand. Definitely sets the bar for the type of people who come here, I'd say. <laughs> the bridge to Lyon overlooking the House of Parliament. I suppose that seeing that helps the patrons of this club put on airs. Nobody's bothered clearing this table yet, it seems. Yoink! Well, if no one's cleaned up, you might as well do them the favor. I will take that, thank you. An unwashed mug from the Gascon Supper Club. It still has traces of liquid at the bottom. These are all high-end foo-foo liqueurs and cordials. You couldn't pay me to drink that rubbish. Excuse me, miss? Oh, well, hello there, handsome. I've never seen you around here before. Care to join me for a drink? <laughs> <laughs> You're very kind to offer, but I must decline. My wife wouldn't appreciate it. Who says she'd have to know? Believe me, she'd know. She's very perceptive. Pity. Seems like all the good ones are already taken. The name's Miles Fordham, and you are? Charlotte Robineau. Pleasure. Would you mind if I asked you a few questions? I suppose not. It would help pass the time. Do you know Desiree Lathan? I knew her, yes. When did you last speak to her? Oh, it's been ages. She and I haven't had much to do with each other for a while. Why is that? It's really not important. We just didn't see eye to eye on a few things. Was she at the Grand Dame's ball? Yes, she was. Drinking up a storm as usual. Desi really knew how to enjoy herself. How much did she drink? Oh, I don't know. She used to outmatch me, and I can handle quite a bit. Right. Well, I mean, clearly this is not, like, this is not true French. This is, like, Americanized, you know, Creole, Louisiana, not, not Louisiana French. <laughs> Tell me a little about yourself. Why, Mr. Fordham, I hardly know you. Well, that said, I'm always open to making new friends. Ooh, watch out, Miles. I think she's getting ready to pounce. I don't know. I, I wouldn't assume that. I wouldn't assume they don't know French, but I mean... It, it could just be part of the world building. What can you tell me about Desiree's death? Just what I've read in the papers. She burned to death. It's horrible. She certainly didn't deserve to die in such a gruesome way. Did she have any enemies? Anyone who might have wanted to do her harm? No. Everyone loved her. Except you? Mr. Fordham, I said we haven't had much to do with each other. That doesn't mean <laughs> I didn't care for her. Now please, let's drop the subject. Were you here for the Grand Dame's ball the other night? Of course. We all were. Well, except for Laura. Terrible business. You mean Laura Dupre? The very same. Oh, right. Have you met? I have. In fact, I investigated her attempted murder. Is that right? 
I heard she ended up in jail for torturing her servants. Yes, it was quite disturbing. I didn't think Laura was capable of such a thing. She always seemed so kind. I guess we all have our dark secrets. Does that apply to you as well, Miss Robineau? If I told you, then it would no longer be a secret, would it? Fair point. <laughs> I must compliment you on your lovely hairstyle. Oh, how sweet of you to say. Though it is getting a bit ragged. I'm having it done this afternoon, in fact. <laughs> My girl Adelaide is a treasure. You don't say. <laughs> well, she must be talented to improve on near perfection. Oh, such a flattering tongue, Mr. Fordham. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. Thanks, sweetheart. Maybe I'll compliment her more later if I have a reason to do so. Uh, police station. I didn't imagine we'd be coming back here in this lifetime. Fordham, have you solved the case already? Don't I wish. I haven't even gotten started. Well, I'm here if you need anything. Just be sure not to let Snelling see you. Is he back yet? He arrived a few minutes ago. I expect he'll be sequestered in his office today, so you shouldn't have to worry too much. Good to know. Okay, now we just need someone to walk by the windows selling beignets. Prime Minister Atwood, watching over the department with his signature scowl. Who's that guy? I don't think I've ever seen anyone reading those books. I'm half convinced they're purely decorative. Mmm, the old Jack and Stars. Sure was nice when that sign didn't apply to us. <laughs> Miles, are you crazy? If you go wandering around the department for no good reason, Snelling will have you thrown in the jail. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. Back to work, I see. Yes, well, the coffee shop holiday had to end eventually. I'm gonna have to find someplace else to meet you. The higher-ups are getting suspicious. To be honest, it was a bit wretched there. I won't miss it. Well then, Mr. Big Bug, you can have the honor of choosing the next place. Under a bridge somewhere, perhaps. <laughs> Ouch. Have you been able to find any leads on Bill's death? Have you? Not yet, no. I don't want to get your hopes up, but I may have something. Ooh. Oh? The man you're looking for, he was burgling a flower shop, right? Yes. I couldn't help but notice that in the last two cases you've had, plants have been used to drug people. You're it right. may just be a coincidence, but I also think it's something worth looking out for. If it becomes a pattern, there's a good chance it might be related. Hmm. But two different people did the drugging. True, but in both cases, they learned from someone else. It's a stretch, but it's better than nothing. I'll take it into consideration. Any updates on the Harris baby? He's back home and doing well, thanks to you. I'm glad to hear it. You did an impressive job. I admit I was a bit concerned about how you'd fare after months of taking it easy. But I suppose detective work is like riding a bicycle. It's a guaranteed way to end up with a broken arm. <laughs> I see the Gazette has caught wind of this supposed mass murderer. Yes, Snelling has been positively fuming about it. Between that and the Lathan case being publicized on the same day, it's been a nightmare for the department. Any idea how they got the information? I don't think anyone in the department has spoken to the press. Maybe they just have some very good reporters. So hmm. is it serious? Should we be concerned? Three murders is nothing to sneeze at, but all the victims have been men in Chumley. If that changes, then things might start getting urgent. Ugh, isn't that just the way of things? You can bet they'd have already caught the bastard if the first body had turned up in Leon. Hmm. Yeah, watch, it'll be, uh, uh, she'll, she'll be the, uh, the, the, the big bad behind all of this. <laughs> I'm having some trouble with Officer Parsons. You and everyone else who's ever met him. What's the problem? <laughs> He's keeping me away from the Lathan crime scene. Of course. He's one of the most loyal to Snelling. Any suggestions for how I might get him away so I can look around? I might have an idea. 
There are several reported crimes that haven't been assigned yet, and Parsons is itching to prove his investigative chops. He'd probably abandon his post for a good enough lead and a chance to impress Snelling. Hmm. Up to no good. You impress me. Department politics are something of a specialty of mine. About getting Parsons away from the crime scene? All right. These are the, as of yet, unassigned crimes. The body of a young man was found in the Hodgman River by the Gascone docks this morning. A woman named Chumley reported hearing a single gunshot in her neighbor's apartment last night. There was a deadly explosion at a factory in Worcester that may be linked to sabotage. And that's it for right now. Any of those strike your fancy? Hmm. Let's hear about the gunshot. Ethel Williamson reported hearing a sound she described as a single gunshot coming from her neighbor's apartment last night. She said she had been hearing arguments over the past several weeks, and there may have been domestic violence involved. When she knocked on the door, she got no answer, but she said she noticed the distinct smell of flowers. Intriguing. Do you think Parsons will be interested? Hmm. No, actually, let's try another one. All right, which one? Give me the details about the factory explosion. The owner of the Hawkins Steelworks reported an explosion at his factory that killed two of his workers. He says he's been getting several threatening letters about his current project. And so he suspects someone has sabotaged the operation? Yes, likely the Redites. Do you think Parsons will be interested? No, actually, let's try another one. All right, which one? Tell me more about the body found at the docks. An unidentified man in his 20s was found in the river near the docks. The dock worker who reported it said that the body was bloated and decomposing. Ew. It must have been in the river several days. Dr. Edwards performed a post-mortem and determined the cause of death to be a blow to the head. I see. Certainly leaves a lot of questions. Do you think Parsons will be interested? Hmm. Let's try that Sounds one. Sounds good. Let's go with that one. All right. I'll send out the report as soon as we're done talking. Have a moment to go over my current case? I'm afraid you're on your own this time, Fordham. The walls have ears around here. If they find out I'm helping you, it won't end well for either of us. Understood. I'll still be here when you've solved it, though. That's it for now. Better get back to it, then. Uh... How who was drugged? Well, the people in the previous cases, um... The, um... Let's see, what was it? Well, so, um, the, the nanny in the previous case, her tea was drugged, and then in the one before that, uh, the plants... What were... how were plants involved in the, in the first case? Like, it involved, it involved like, um... Like, a, oh, um... Like a specific like application of ethericity. I forget the, the exact details. Let's see. Damn, looks like Parsons didn't take the bait. He must not have considered that case enough to prove himself to Snelling. Okay. I bet the um the gunshot might do it. Cause that might have something to do with the um the mass murders. Got a moment? Yes. Unfortunately, Parsons didn't take the bait. Nothing worse than a picky investigator. <laughs> I wish more people were like you. Uh, thank you? <laughs> All right. These are the, as of yet, unassigned crimes. A woman in Chum... There was a dead... And... Any... Let's hear about... The Ethel Williamson. She said when she not... Intrigued. You think Parsons... Sounds good. Let's go with that one. All right. I'll... That's it. Better get back. Yeah, I like her, too. <laughs> ah, here we go. Looks like Parsons took the bait. Now maybe we can finally have a look around the crime scene. You have to hand it to her. An invitation to the gas co- No, I can't actually- Definitely t Hmm, no time. 
Judging by these, let's just hope we're. T okay. All right. Now. Begging your pardon, officer. Yes. What is it, sir? Do you enjoy working with Officer Parsons? If I'm being honest, he can be a bit much sometimes. Trust me, you're not the only one who feels that way. I didn't have much interaction with him when I was a detective, but the few times I did weren't very pleasant. I could tell he doesn't seem to care much for you. Although I don't think he cares much for anyone except the chief, and that's only because he's the one who gives out the promotions. What was Chief Snelling doing here? He was inspecting the crime scene. Yes, but why was he involved? Is there something special about it that would require the chief of police to look into it? Uh, well, someone thought it might be related to the big case we're not supposed to talk about. You mean the mass murderer? Yes, sir. I could see why the chief is upset that the news has gotten out. And is it related? No, I don't believe so. But the news reports have been getting the public on edge. Of course. The less information there is, the easier it is for rumors to start spreading. Exactly. Chief Snelling has a lot of fires to put out. If that's the case, it's too bad he didn't get to Ms. Lathan in time. <laughs> Zing. Thank you, Maxion. Thank you for the host. Love and hugs right back at you. And I wish you the best of evenings as well. And also the best of early mornings, as, as, as good as early mornings can possibly be. <laughs> Is there anything you can tell me about Desiree Lathan? I couldn't really say. Come now, I'm trying to help this investigation. Any small detail would be useful. Well, I haven't really looked over the crime scene too much. It's rather gruesome, you see. Is the body still here? Yes, what's left of it at any rate. Miss Lathan was only identified by the tattoo on her foot. Hmm. I see. I know, right? Mornings, who needs them? Has there been much progress here? Snelling and Parsons examined the scene, that's all I know. Do you think I might have a look? Now that the initial investigation's been conducted? I'm afraid that's out of the question, sir. I have my orders. Hmm. Officer Kane, I'm trying to aid this investigation. There may have been something overlooked by the others. If Parsons were to catch you, my career would be over. Trust me, he won't be back for some time. I swear on my honor as a former member of the New Britannia Police. All right, I suppose you can go in for a moment. But please, be quick about it. Thank you, Officer Kane. I promise, this will stay between us. I just love rookie officers. They're so gullible. <laughs> I once got one to shine my shoes for a week after convincing him it was department policy. Good times. Hazing. Thanks for your time, officer. Not a problem. Hey, Jack Store, happy new year to you too. Thanks, you, Kane. Nothing new to ask him about right now. Usually people with, with the name of Kane are bad news. That's certainly Ooh. a pungent aroma. I can see why the officer stuck to the living room. Oof. Surprisingly modest quarters for a grand dame. You'd never guess she could buy out the likes of you and me a thousand times over. This is, I'm almost certain this is going to have something to do with the, the, um, the, um, spontaneous combustion stuff we were reading about in the previous case. Because I believe it mentioned, uh, usually victims are elderly women who have uh, a history of, of, uh, uh, indulgence in alcohol. And both of those things are true of this, uh, of this person right here. So I think spontaneous combustion may in fact, I don't know if it, if it actually is the cause, maybe someone just wanted to look like that, but we'll see. As much as I like this painting, this isn't the time for art appreciation. Doesn't look as though this fireplace has been used in a long time. I suppose we can rule it out as the source. <laughs> Some crumpled up letters. They look to be of the romantic variety. They're from the same person, one Peter Andrews. Hmm. It's always sad to see a case of unrequited love. I'm thinking we should find out who this Peter Andrews is. I agree. Good idea. Now, are you finally willing to admit that looking through rubbish <laughs> does yield results sometimes? <laughs> Fine, you win. But I don't think I envy your prize. <laughs> All right, July 15th, 1844. Dearest Desiree, I offer you my heart, though I am sadly unable to offer you my hand. Oh, that circumstances were different. Why must life and love both be so cruel? I must continue to love and admire you from afar. I can only hope these feelings are mutual. Love, Peter. September 27th, 1844. My dearest Desiree, once again I must declare my love for you. 
Though you have not yet responded to any of my letters, I maintain hope that you care for me as I do for you. I remain ever faithful. Call upon me and I will rush to your side. We will embrace as Mr. and Mrs. Andrews at long last. Love, Peter. Okay. It looks as though Miss Lathan was in the middle of writing something. <laughs> it's an article for Brentwell Magazine. Oh. I was hoping it would be a, Dear Peter, Igniting leave me the fuck the alone. Fires within. <laughs> a bit on the nose, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Classic Brentwell. They have a reputation for making their writers go to extremes for their articles, all for the sake of entertainment. Perhaps we should pay their offices a visit, see exactly what it was Miss Lathan was doing for them. Igniting the Fires Within by Desiree Lathan for Brentwell Magazine. We are all familiar with the I with, with, with idea of an inner fire, a term usually applied to our sense of passion or, or determination. But what if that inner fire was of more of a, was, eh, was, sorry, was of a more physical nature? That is to say, if each of us had the capability to light a real fire within our bodies. Sounds dangerous. That's a nice portrait of Miss Lathan. Too bad it was damaged by the fire. The area where the artist's signature should be has been singed and is unreadable. Uh, too bad. But the date is still legible. It's from this year. Hmm. Okay. The flames must have been fairly high to be able to stain the ceiling like that. Looks like this one barely managed to survive. Pity. It looked like a nice work of art. Hmm. There's a letter in here. August 23rd, 1844. This just oh. keeps getting more and more interesting. The law firm of Usher and Price isn't too far from here. I think it's definitely worth paying him a little visit. Dear Miss Lathan, this letter is to inform you that we have received your request to make changes to your beneficiary, beneficiary as indicated in your last will and testament. Please come to the law offices of Usher and Price at 72 Cadman Street, Wor uh, Worcester, so that we may review the documents and make the necessary edits. Yours, Jonas Usher. Uh-huh. That's always a big red flag. Odd. Another pile of ashes under the bed. Looks as though whatever she kept underneath got burned too. Or it could be that whatever was under the bed is what caught fire in the first place. Although, there's no evidence of what started it. All that's left is a small piece of cloth. Might as well take it. Yoink. The cloth appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. Ugh. Ashes to oh, ashes God, and all ew. that. I'm glad I was buried. Cremation always seemed a bit too hot to handle. Now's not the time for jokes, Bill. Are you serious? Death is the best time for jokes. Otherwise, it's all just a bunch of boo-hoo-hoo this and wah-wah-wah that. <laughs> and trust me, there's plenty of that in life. Hell, you'd know better than anyone. Ow. All right, all right. Just shut it for a bit while I look over the crime scene, would you? I need to concentrate. Yeah, this is... Horrific. Alas, poor Desiree, a woman of infinite riches, of tastes most fancy. <laughs> Where's all your money now? Come to think of it, that question might be worth answering. Hmm. Yeah. Who has your money? Ugh, greasy, fetid, stinking ashes. Who the human body was capable of producing such a disgusting byproduct? I'm surprised the coroner hasn't taken the body away yet. Probably because there isn't much of a body left to take. Either that, or Dr. Edwards knows better than to deal with something like this. That's extremely unlike him. He'd jump at the chance to examine this body. Perhaps we should allow him the pleasure. I hope you're not suggesting what I think you're suggesting. Yeah, missing hand. I don't think Desiree will be able to give us a hand with this investigation. <laughs> Bill? <laughs> what? I thought it was funny. Clearly. That makes one of us. This one's clean. Well, aside from the fact that the rest of the leg is burned off. There's a tattoo on her ankle. It says, Dancing Through Life. Hm, hate to break it to her, but that dance is over. Oh, Miles, really? You're going to carry the ashes around in a pewter mug? It's vital to the investigation that we find out exactly what happened to the body. If anyone can tell us for certain, it's Dr. Edwards. Fair enough. I suppose this isn't the most unpleasant thing you've carried around before. Remember that time we had to go looking for that murder victim's missing head? Ugh. I'd really rather not, actually. <laughs> Gross. Wasn't there... There are still traces of liquid in the bottom of that mug. I should, um... I don't want to mix the ashes with the liquid. I want to dry them out. Dry it out first. 
I don't think there's much else we can learn just by looking at these ashes, Miles. All right. Well, that was gross. Was there someone else in the room just now? I thought I heard you talking. No. Oh, no. It's just sometimes I think aloud when investigating crime scenes. I see. Good <coughs> save. We don't need any more police officers thinking <coughs> you're insane. Ugh. The smell from the bedroom is getting worse. I don't know how much longer I can stand it. Yeah. 90% <laughs> beer, exactly. Hmm. Ashes mixed with beer. Delicious. All right. Brentwell Magazine, Usher and Price. Actually, let's go here. Your yeah. Lord, what is that smell? Did you step in something out there, Fordham? Private investigation is a dirty job, Upton. You know that. <laughs> so I have this mug of ashes <laughs> and beer. <laughs> Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. Would it be possible for me to access the mortuary? The mortuary? What for? I'd like to consult with Dr. Edwards. All right, but be careful. Make sure you don't let Snelling see you back there. That's it for now. Better get back to it then. Wait. Oh, wait, I'm supposed to go, uh, hold on. I'm supposed to go back in here, I think. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Edwards' lab was always a fascinating place to learn about death. A bit less so now that I'm quite the expert. Oh, did I miss cleaning up some bit of that last corpse? Oh, Fordham, what brings you down here? Hello, Edwards. I was wondering if I could pick your brain. Yes, this one. yes, of course. This one right here. There's one in a jar over there, <laughs> and I may have another one around here somewhere. <laughs> that coroner humor never gets old, does it? <laughs> anyway, let me know what you want to discuss. This fellow's not going anywhere. God, I love coroners in video games. Like, inevitably, like any game where, where there's a coroner, you can talk to, get to talk to a coroner about anything. They're always great, and like, it's, it's always a fascinating conversation. The brain is truly a fascinating organ. If only more people used it. <laughs> a fine example of well-developed deltoids, latissimus dorsi, and gluteus maximi. Grabby hands. <laughs> Assorted lab equipment for setting things on fire or causing explosions. You know, the perfect way to pass the time. <laughs> Assorted... I remember when Edwards used to keep his collection of preserved reproductive organs on this shelf. He must be getting soft in his old age. Or perhaps that's exactly what happened to his collection. <laughs> Thank you, William. I was going to make that same joke. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I saw Edwards weighing his lunch on this once. I'm... Well, at least he died with a smile on his face. Sort of. I am Murray, the all-powerful demonic skull. <laughs> it looks rather fresh. There's a plaque at the base of the jar that says H. Putnam. That's probably a reference to something, but I do not know what. I feel sorry for the poor slob who has to clean that out. That collection of stains, fluids, and other repugnant materials almost makes me homesick for the chum. I wonder if Edwards ever got around to fixing this typewriter. The letter E being out of alignment always made his reports a nightmare to read. <laughs> you've seen one dissected torso, you've seen them all. Sure is a lot of rubbish crammed inside our upper bodies, isn't it? <laughs> that rubbish is important. It's important to keep your hands clean when dealing with dead bodies. After all, you never know where they've been. Until after the post-mortem exam, anyway. This provides the room with just the right amount of heat. Unlike the incinerators in the crematorium. Talk about overkill. Edwards keeps assorted bottles and specimens in there. Nothing too remarkable that I can see. I'd say being hooked up to that machine was the worst experience of my life, except I was already dead at the time. <laughs> Imagine a giant mosquito sucking out all your blood and then replacing it with formaldehyde. Not very pleasant. 
gross. Nice pair of legs. Edwards must have some very good friends in the department to have gotten this custom-made table. It does suit the room, though. That is a pretty rad table. Seems to be empty for now. That's most definitely a good thing. Ooh, stick your hands in it. <laughs> Not a stitch of clothing on him. As if having your torso ripped open and poked around inside weren't bad enough. There truly is no dignity in death. All right, talk to me, Kurt. Pardon Order. me, Edwards. Yes. Keeping busy down here, Edwards? Oh, you know me. I've always got my hands in someone. <laughs> Edwards always did have a way with words. This postmortem was just a formality, really. The victim died of a gunshot wound to the head. Last week, though, we had a real kicker. An old man was brought in, and though he appeared quite dead, I was told that he'd been in a trance for over half a year. Hmm. Apparently, he was hypnotized right at the point of death, and somehow managed to remain alive in a fashion. Weird. In any case, when I began performing the exam, his entire body decayed into a putrefied mess within minutes. It was fascinating. And disgusting. Uh, should you really be giving me these details, Edwards? Oh, hell, I don't mind telling you, Miles. It's not like you're going to go tell Snelling. Besides, you're Got the only point. one who's come to see me all week. Dead people make lousy conversationalists. Hey, I take offense to that statement. <laughs> You're a special case, Bill. So, Snelling got promoted to chief, did he? Yes, not too long after you left. Personally, I think he took advantage of your situation to change things around here. Was it really that much of a shock? Bill and I weren't exactly the most well-liked detectives on the force. But you were respected. You two solved over 350 cases in 15 years. Damn. You were an institution. Damn right we were. It's so easy for people to resent their more successful peers. Ah, Edwards. Nice to know someone missed us. You didn't examine Bill after he died, did you? Ha! Ah, he wishes. <laughs> no, there was nothing inconclusive about his death. He died from impact after falling from the roof of a building. Why? Was there something else I should have looked into? No, I was just curious. As fond as I am of Edwards, it would have been a bit much for him to go poking around my insides. Oh, come on. It really bonds two people. <laughs> I found this piece of burned cloth at the crime scene. Could you take a look at it for me? What do you need me to look at exactly? It appears to have some oily residue on it. Interesting. I'm afraid I have my hands full right now, but you can feel free to use my workbench if you'd like. Hmm. To do what, exactly? Surely they taught you something about basic chemical analysis when you worked here. Yes, well, I always let Bill handle the more technical aspects of our cases. <laughs> a real pity I'm not around to help you anymore, isn't it? <laughs> but I'll have a look and see if something comes back to me. I've got these human ashes from a crime scene. Straight to the point. I knew I liked you for a reason, Fordham. Who do they belong to? Desiree Lathan. She was a Gascon Grand Dame. Oh, of course. I heard about that case. She was found burned in her home, wasn't she? That's right. I meant to go over there later today. Well, then I suppose I've saved you the journey. Would you have a look at these? Does this mean you're officially on the case? Not as such. In fact, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention I'd been here. Ah, clandestine operation. Sneaking around under Snelling's nose. I don't have much of a choice. I'm pretty much persona non grata around here these days. Well, you're always welcome in my mortuary. Aww. Preferably while still breathing, of course. <laughs> anyway, Thanks, dude. I'll just take those ashes off your hands. I'm sure your social life will soon improve. <laughs> yes, I was making quite the impression. <laughs> this is an interesting choice of container. It was either that or carry them around in my bare hands. Well, I'm a bit busy right now, but I should have something for you within the next couple of hours. But you do realize the information won't be exclusive to you. I'll have to pass it on to the detectives on the case. Naturally. That just gives me more of an incentive to work quickly. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Anytime, Fordham. All right, then. Well, I guess let's have a look at this uh, workbench. Also, I have to actually look at the, uh, the burnt cloth. Uh, burn remains a piece of cloth, pretty tough traces of some oily residue on it. Okay. Uh, 
Uh, it's been ages since we got to do any type of chemical analysis. This will be grand. Dr. Edwards, could you remind me what it is I'm meant to be doing? Yes, of course. Go ahead and get as much of that oily residue from the cloth into the Petri dish. Good. Now add some of the chemical reagent in the red bottle to the dish. Okay. Aha. The oil turned orange. Yes. The reagent has caused a chemical reaction and changed the oil's color. Isn't science fun? <laughs> Quite. But how does this help me? I have some samples of the most common types of flammable oils on the shelf. Go ahead and add them to the test tubes. Ah, okay. Good. Now simply check each one with the reagent to see if you can find a match. And if I don't find one? Then I suggest going out and looking for more oil samples. Hmm. Alrighty. Whale oil, kerosene, coal oil. Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. Well, oil be damned. <laughs> Looks like that's not a match. Uh. <sighs> oh, you love it. <laughs> I bet I'm going to guess that whatever I have here is not going to be what I'm looking for. There's so much for kerosene being the culprit. <laughs> oh, the puns. How much I love them. Too bad, I would have bet on it being coal oil. Yep, nope. Nothing uh, Nothing we have yet, so we'll have to come back later. I don't think the good doctor has anything else to teach us right now. All right, let's turn our investigation elsewhere for the moment. Actually, uh, one second. Oh, okay. Oh, never mind. All right, uh, so magazine. Or Usher and Price. Let's go to Usher and Price. They're closer. <laughs> Good afternoon, sir. Welcome to the law offices of Usher and Price. May I help you? Perhaps you may. Yes. Good afternoon. My name is Miles Fordham. I'm a private investigator, and I'm looking for Jonas Usher. Oh, I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Usher is not seeing anyone today. If it's a matter of urgent legal importance, you could see Mr. Price. <laughs> what are those things? Like bars of soap. <laughs> Seems like they've got some kind of modern message delivery service in here. Of all the things to spend your money on. <laughs> and of course I'm getting uh, Grim Fandango flashbacks from that. That pipe really clashes with the rest of the decor in here. Plaque says it's a portrait of Thomas Usher. Looks like a real go-getter. Begging your pardon, sir. Yes? If I may ask, what is the reason for Mr. Usher's refusal to see anyone today? He has a rather important trial starting tomorrow and doesn't want to run the risk of falling ill. Falling mm. ill? Mr. Usher is very particular about his health. Very particular. I see. Hmm. Sir, it is of the utmost importance that I speak with Mr. Usher. And as I said, he isn't taking visitors today. But it's in regards to his client, Desiree Lathan. Or should I say, former client. Miss Lathan found another attorney? No, I'm sorry to be the one to have to inform you, but she's dead. 
Dead? Hmm. I had no idea. No? It was in today's newspaper. I haven't read it yet. Mr. Usher forbids it in the office. But surely he's Why? right. Just because he forbids you reading the paper in the office. No, I mean he forbids the presence of newspapers hmm. in the office. He fears they bring in outside germs. I see. <laughs> in any case, if what you say is true, I'll need some sort of proof. I suppose just bringing in a copy of the newspaper is out of the question, then. <laughs> eh, we'll have to find another way. <laughs> Perhaps Mr. Usher will see me when he sees this. Oh? What's that? A letter from Mr. Usher to his client, Desiree Latham. What? That's private correspondence. How did you get that? It was evidence I found at a crime scene. And how is it relevant? The crime scene in question was Miss Latham's own bedroom, where she was found burned to death. That's quite a claim, Mr. Forum. I can assure you that Mr. Usher deals primarily with facts. Right now, the only fact this letter proves to me is that you somehow rummaged through Miss Latham's possessions and acquired it. It does have a point. We'll need something a bit more persuasive. Already? Uh, I actually don't have anything to show. Uh, right. Please stop wasting my time then. I'm very busy. <laughs> I appreciate your time. Enjoy the rest of your day, sir. I won't. It would be unwise to barge into Mr. Usher's office having been told he isn't seeing anyone today. We need to find a way to make him change his mind. I bet these are bars of soap. <laughs> if he's uh, such a neat freak. Or germaphobe, I should say. All right then. Let's investigate Brentwell Magazine. Ah, hello there. Are you here to drop off an article? There's a no, Goldfarb again. No, actually, I'm a private investigator. The name's Miles Fordham. How exciting! You must have so many interesting stories. You could say that, yes. Please come in, come in. I'm Alan Brentwell, owner and publisher of Brentwell Magazine. Pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> Clearly I need to play The Lost Files of Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> if it's anywhere near as good as this game, I'm sure I'd love it. Useful for getting to those hard to reach places. In my case, that's everywhere. Confessions of a Steam Addict by Ezra Bartley. I think I'm better off not knowing. For Whom the Bell Almost Told by Suki Snobs. Fascinating stuff. <laughs> For the publisher of a sensationalist rag, Brentwell is awfully well read. Assuming he actually has read all those books, of course. Empty. Too bad. Brentwell has a front row seat to all the horrible things he might want to write about in his magazine. I can only begin to imagine how many lurid and salacious articles are kept in those cabinets. I love lurid and salacious articles. I can only the more lurid and salacious, the better. I have some questions for you, Mr. Brentwell. Wonderful! It's so seldom I get to answer questions. He's so excited. <laughs> what made you decide to start this business? I always wanted to be a journalist. I never had much luck with any of the local papers, though. So I decided to start my own. <laughs> I admit it's not exactly what I wanted, but I like to think Brentwell Magazine has found its own unique voice. Voice? More like a gurgling scream. <laughs> hey, nothing wrong with that. Tell me about Brentwell Magazine. We're a monthly publication focusing on both fiction and non-fiction pieces. Ah, uh, yes, you're publishing that serial, aren't you? The Dissembling Mechanism? You're a subscriber! <laughs> Tell me, what did you think of the conclusion? Quite astonishing, wasn't it? I haven't had a chance to read it yet, I'm afraid. Ah, then I won't say any more about it. My dream was to have a magazine that was well-respected and educational. But sadly, it seems today's audiences are much more interested in reading about sightings of giant bat creatures or mysterious buried treasures. Such a pity. I hear you have a bit of a reputation for making your reporters do questionable yeah, things for their boy. articles. You are mistaken, Mr. Fordham. I don't force my writers to do anything. They seem to have this notion that the more extreme their research, the more authentic the articles will be. What sort of extremes are we talking about here? 
we had one writer who attempted to heighten the sensation of fear she wanted to express in her story. Damn near decapitated herself by sticking her head through an opening at the clock tower at St. Denis Cathedral. Ugh. Thankfully, she made it alive. Would have been quite the predicament if she hadn't. <laughs> Especially yeah. considering that was our most popular article last year. Oh, people have such odd taste. <laughs> What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? Desiree Lathan? Oh, why, she came to me a few weeks ago in response to an ad I took out requesting articles. She told me she had an idea readers would love. We agreed on 10 crowns per paragraph, and she was on her way. Come to think of it, I haven't heard from her in a few days. Hmm. Were you aware that Miss Lathan is dead? What? No, I had no idea. What happened? I'm not exactly sure. She seems to have burned to death under mysterious circumstances. Mysterious circumstances? Most of her body was burnt to ash, but there's very little fire damage around her. It's as though she herself just caught fire. Oh, that sounds positively ghastly. Oh dear. Is something wrong? I just remembered the article she was writing. Dear God, I hope she didn't go too far with her research. She might have. What exactly was Desiree's article about? I, uh, I'm not entirely sure. She merely uh, came to me with the proposal. <laughs> she didn't tell you what that idea was? She did, but uh, I, I wasn't sure what to make of it. <laughs> Please, Mr. Brentwell, stop stalling and tell me what she was writing about. <laughs> it was about spontaneous human combustion. Called it. What do you know about spontaneous human combustion? That's the thing. I don't know very much at all. It sounded interesting enough. That's why I accepted Miss Lathan's proposal to write the article about it. But what do you know about it? Only that it's a mysterious phenomenon in which a person catches fire spontaneously and burns to death. It sounds exactly as you described Miss Lathan's condition. Do you know what Miss Lathan's <laughs> research on the subject involved? Only the one contact I gave her, a Miss Angela Maxwell at the Spectre Society in Gascone. Yep, that's where we, re that's where we read about it. The Spectre Society, huh? Shouldn't be surprised to hear that name again. Are you a member? Actually, I am. <laughs> and I suggest you do some research there. There's bound to be something relevant in that curious library of theirs. Thank you. Perhaps I will. Thanks for your time, Mr. Brentwell. The pleasure is all mine. All right, then. I don't think there's really anything else worth asking him about right now. Ms. Maxwell, fancy meeting you again. Interesting, this is the first time we've had a, uh, a recurring location across cases. Aside from like home and the coffee shop. Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. Could I ask you about some things, Ms. Maxwell? Certainly, darling. Are you familiar with a woman named Desiree Lathan? Yes, she came to see me just last week. She told me she was doing research for an article she was writing for Brentwell magazine. What sort of research? She asked me a few questions and looked at my books. That was all. She wasn't here for very long. Yeah. <laughs> and what was she researching? Something about spontaneous human combustion, I believe. Yeah, she is definitely the, uh, the, the, um... Magentia Moonbeam uh, XP from, from Gabriel Knight. Did you know that Desiree Lathan is dead? What? My god, no. I didn't. What happened to her? She was found burned to death in her bed. How awful. You have any idea how this may have happened? There are a number of possibilities. But if she was in the middle of researching spontaneous human combustion, and then to have this happen, it can't be a coincidence. Are you suggesting she herself was a victim of spontaneous combustion? One need only compare the circumstances of her death with the facts, darling. She can't be serious, can she? What can you tell me about spontaneous human combustion? I'm not overly familiar with the subject, but I do have a book about it on the shelf back there. You are welcome to look at it if it will help. I may, but I'd like to know what your understanding of it is. Well, I believe it is when the human body inexplicably catches fire and burns. 
It usually occurs among elderly women who drink to excess and very little fire damage is caused around the body. <laughs> That's really all I know, darling. It's not a very agreeable subject for study now, is it? Thank you for the information. It was very enlightening. <laughs> it was my pleasure, darling. Enlightening. I see what you did there. Yeah, spontaneous human combustion is the voodoo of this case. Uh, Madam Psychosis was the voodoo of the previous case. <laughs> Alright, so we've already read the uh, spontaneous combustion book, but let's read it again. This all sounds strangely familiar, but spontaneous human combustion can't be real. Can it? Then again, sometimes the simplest explanation is the correct one. Uh, blah 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 blah. First death from fire originated without any apparent source of external external ignition. Fire to start within the body of the victim. Da -da -da. Victims are chronic alcoholics, elderly females. Hands and feet usually fall off. Fire has caused very little damage to things around the body. Residue of greasy and fetid ashes is left behind. That all matches up. Product of alcoholism. Yeah, uh, this was the uh, the key book about that. And uh, a, um, the previous case involved a woman who believed that her dead son's soul had been reincarnated uh, as another baby, and therefore she kidnapped the baby, believing she could get her son back. All right, so... What else we got? Oh, I could just finish the case right now. <laughs> Um, let's not, though. There's definitely more information that we can uncover, I'm sure. I'll be going now. May the spirits guide you to that which you seek. Let's see... Yeah, it could be the answer, but I, I'd like to uh, see if I can um, uncover any more information first. Miss Robino? Oh, it's you again. Have you come to ask me more questions? Yes, if you wouldn't mind. No, no. Be my guest. Is the name Peter Andrews familiar to you? Peter Andrews? Is he still around? I'd be able to tell you that if you told me who he is. He's desperate. That's who he is. A lovesick fool who is obsessed with Desi. Sent her love letters all of the time. Well, you know where I can find him. Why would you want to? Because I want to question him about Miss Lathan's death. Oh, I suppose that makes some sense. All I remember Desi telling me is that he worked at the bank of Vespuccia. A clerk, or some such. <laughs> Imagine. Thank you, that's very helpful. It is, in fact. Let's compliment her some more. You've really got a great sense of fashion and style. All the other grand dames must be jealous. Oh, you. <laughs> Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. Thanks, sweetheart. All right, cool. New lead. The Bank of Vespuccia. Mr. Fordham. Yeah, ah, yes. Mr. Dupre. Oh, that guy. Good to see you again. Is, is all well with you? Absolutely. Everything is wonderful. Because of you, this city has finally seen Laura Dupre for the monster she is. I cannot thank you enough. I suppose you're welcome? <laughs> now then, is there anything I can help you with? Yes, I'm looking for Peter Andrews. I was told he worked here. That's right. His desk is just over there. Thank you, Mr. Dupre. Lovely seeing you. Yay, Mr. Dupre. He was a reasonably nice guy, as I recall. <laughs> Offline banking. <laughs> We haven't got anything else to ask him about right now. What an absurd contraption. Imagine needing all those extra bits and bobs just to tell the time. 
I tried using one of these automatic money dispensers once, but I nearly got my arm stuck inside. <laughs> they still got a long way to go. Hey, mind cozy. Yeah, impressive bit of hardware. It would take a criminal mastermind to rob this bank. Let's rob that bank. <laughs> All right, Peter Andrews. Mr. Andrews. Yes. Miles Fordham, private investigator. May I ask you a few questions? Yes, I suppose that would be fine. Have a seat. I'd rather stand if it's all the same to you. Now then. Huh. He's, uh, into older women, I see. Exactly what is your role here at the bank? I'm the manager. I handle the new accounts, organize finance, that sort of thing. Have you been here long? Coming up on 17 years. Is this at all relevant to your investigation? Anything could be, Mr. Andrews. So, not exactly a clerk. A little higher rank than that. Do you know Desiree Lathan? Desiree Lathan? No, I can't say the name rings any bells. Liar! Objection! <laughs> you say you don't know Miss Lathan. Would you care to explain these? <laughs> why are they crumpled up? Did she throw them out? And why do you have them? <laughs> I just love catching people like this. Relax, Mr. Andrews. Let's take this slowly. Now, I can assume by your reaction that these are your letters? Yes, they are. So why did you lie about knowing Miss Lathan? I... I promised my wife I would cut off contact. But you clearly didn't. The most recent letter is from two weeks ago. Did she hire you? Your wife? No, that's not why I'm here. Ah, well, that's somewhat of a relief, then. I'm sure it is. So your wife knows about your correspondence with Miss Lathan? Well, I don't know if you could really call it correspondence. Desiree never wrote back. And now she yes, never will. Peggy, uh, that is to say Margaret found out shortly after we married. Exactly how many letters did this bounder send, I wonder? At first I tried to make it out that she was just a friend, but she found one of the more intimate ones while I was writing it. I see. And what was her reaction? What do you think? I still have the scar from the glass that she threw at me. You're still married? Oh, yes. Margaret comes from a very strict Catholic family. They would sooner she die than divorce. Hmm. It hasn't been easy. She makes sure to take full advantage of the situation, always buying herself the most expensive jewelry and spending a fortune on food for those wretched cats. I swear, they're better fed than I am. <laughs> Where might I find Mrs. Andrews? I'd like to speak to her. Our house is at 713 Longfellow Street, just at the edge of Gascon. But I warn you, it's a goddamn menagerie she's got. I'd stay away if you're averse to being covered in animal hair. I'll take my chances. <laughs> I'm going to make friends with all of the kitties. <laughs> Were you aware of Miss Lathan's death? What? Desiree is dead? No. She was found burned to death in her bed. You're lying. You have to be. I'm afraid I'm not, Mr. Andrews. Oh, Desiree. Do you have any idea who might have wanted to kill her? No, she was a marvelous woman. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry to have to be the bearer of bad news, but at least you won't have to worry about writing any more letters. That isn't funny, Mr. Fordham. <laughs> yes, it was. Don't listen to him. <laughs> Thanks for your time, Mr. Andrews. Hmm. <laughs> she, found, she found one of the more intimate ones while I was writing it. I probably should have kept my pants on at the time. <laughs> All right. Well, this is going to be fun. Squirrels. Nice house. It definitely screams eccentric person lives here. Speaking of which, that must be Mrs. Andrews over there with those rodents. Okay. Current theory is that she killed her. Out of jealousy. Rats with fluffy tails. How anyone can find them endearing is beyond me. Hey, don't badmouth rats. Rats are awesome. Excuse me, Mrs. Andrews? May I help you? I'm Miles Fordham, private investigator. I was hoping you could answer a few questions. Hmm, all right then. Don't worry, my darlings. Mommy only needs a moment to speak to the nice man. Then I'll give you all the nuts you can eat. My little friends just adore nuts, Mr. Fordham. Clearly. Guess that explains why squirrels are so attracted to her. <laughs> nice hairdo. Do you have any hobbies or pastimes, Mrs. Andrews? 
Well, of course. I do a bit of knitting and I take care of my pets. I take it you're fond of animals? Oh, yes. I just love animals. Most prove to be better company than people. Is that right? Well, consider this, Mr. Fordham. Animals can't betray you or lie. Uh-oh, I don't like where this is going. <laughs> My furry little companions would never hurt me. Unlike several humans I could name. Who are these companions, exactly? Why, my darling little kitties and squirrel friends, of course. Uh, he did say she has cats, but he, but you're right, he didn't say she has only cats. <laughs> Tell me about your cats. They're the most wonderful little dears. Do you have any pets? Afraid not. My wife isn't too fond of cleaning up after animals. Pity. Cats make wonderful pets. They're good company and are independent, unlike dogs. Hey, dogs are great. Edgar and Hubert are my pride and joy. I give them only the best of everything, and they in turn give me their unconditional love. That's delightful. I used to have a wonderful cat named Tobias, but, oh, he had an unfortunate accident. That's why I never let my two angels out of the house. That's actually good cat ownership. You're not supposed to let your cats outside. What happened to Tobias the cat? Oh, um, I, I really rather not talk about that. It wasn't my finest hour. Let's just say it was an honest misunderstanding which got blown way out of proportion. Hmm. Well, now I just have to know what happened. I hate it when people tease gossip and don't deliver. I'm very curious myself. Your squirrel friends are quite tame. Oh, aren't they just the sweetest? And so smart, too. When I feed them, they come up and put their little paws on my hands Aww. as though they were giving me little squirrel hugs. Aww. And the way they look into my eyes, I can almost hear them saying, thank you for the nuts. <laughs> well, at least you can be grateful that it's only my voice you hear and not some rabbit squirrels. <laughs> You are a very strange lady, and I like you. <laughs> Did you know Desiree Lathan? Not personally. I never met her, but I knew exactly who she was. And who was that? A miserable drunk. Always going out and getting liquored up at her so-called socialite balls. That's indeed. They try to make them seem so fancy and high class. But it's really just a bunch of bitter old hags getting together to gossip about each other with that kind of lifestyle. It was only a matter of time before it caught up with her. You know, she's probably got a point. <laughs> Do you happen to know anything about the circumstances surrounding the death of Miss Lathan? I read in the paper that she was burned to death. In her bed, wasn't it? That's right. Do you have any idea how that may have happened? Well, I already told you she was a drunk. Maybe she came home plastered and decided to smoke in bed. <laughs> I'm rather surprised she was sleeping alone. That woman got around, if you know what I mean. Ooh. She certainly seems to know a lot about Desiree for someone who claims to have never met her. Thank you for the chat. It was very enlightening. Oh, my pleasure, Mr. Fordham. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to get back to tending to my little darlings. I really want to know more about this other cat of yours. Hmm. I wonder if your husband knows. Uh, bank. We haven't got it. Mr. Andrews. Yes? Is there anything you can tell me about your wife's old cat, Tobias? Oh, God. There's a name I was hoping never to hear again. <laughs> she loved that cat. I'm sure she would have married it instead of me if she could. Mangy little bastard was always leaving a mess and knocking things over. But he was Peggy's little angel. Then one day I'd had enough, so I let him outside, and... Yes? The stupid thing managed to get itself killed! Then things got ugly. Hmm. How so? Peggy got a bit carried away, and... Well, let's just say I never imagined a cat could earn someone a criminal record. <laughs> what? The plot thickens. Or perhaps sickens. Thanks for your time, Mr. Andrews. Hmm. Uh, okay, I'm about to go to the police station for this. <laughs> Ooh. 
Learn more about Margaret Andrews' criminal record. Alright. Got a moment, Upton? Yes, but let's make this quick. I need some information on one Margaret Andrews. Apparently, she has a criminal record. Margaret Andrews, eh? Give me a moment to look her up in the archives. Yes, here we are. Margaret Andrews was brought in for questioning five years ago in connection with a fire at a theater in Worcester. Oh? Fire. Yes. Nothing came of it, but she was briefly a suspect. Oh, there's more. She also had a prior conviction for... arson. You don't say. Mm hmm. The file says she set fire to a cab after the driver ran over her cat. She served six months in prison for that. This was back in... 1835. Fascinating. Thank you for your help, Upton. This has been extremely valuable. Nine years ago. So, Margaret Andrews has a jealous streak and a penchant for setting things on fire. Seems a likely culprit to me. Yeah, I'm inclined to agree. But I think we'll need some more proof before That's we... That's it for uh, now. Better get back to it, then. Before we finger her. For good. Let's see... Uh, we don't have any... Actually, I wonder if the, um, the coroner has any information for me about the ashes yet. Pardon me, Edwards. Yes? Have you had a chance to look at those ashes I gave you? Yes, I have. Unfortunately, there isn't much I can tell you. The victim burned to death at a very high temperature. These ashes are greasy and putrid because of liquefied fat from the body, which burned like a candle. As to what caused her to burn, I cannot say without more evidence. I'm sorry, Miles. It's quite all right, Edwards. I appreciate the information nonetheless. Well, just so you don't go away empty-handed, have a copy of my report. Maybe it will be of some use. Cool. Thanks. That's all I needed to know for the moment. Any time, Fordham. Liquefied fat. Like what might be in... soap, perhaps? Getting some, uh, some Fight Club flashbacks here. Hmm. Supper Club and Usher. Desiree Lathan, age 63, died as a result of burning to death. Cause of fire is undetermined. Oh, that actually will probably be uh, what I need to get into see Usher. <laughs> no, I... <laughs> You're, you're very likely right. <laughs> Begging your pardon, sir. Yes? Perhaps Mr. Usher will see me when he sees this. No? Oh, what's that? A report from Dr. Malcolm Edwards, the city coroner, confirming Miss Lathan's untimely demise. Let me see that. Oh my. Wait one moment, would you? <laughs> Foop. Pardon? What is the meaning of this? Uh, the gentleman who brought that is a private investigator. He's waiting outside to see you. Send him in, then. You heard him, Mr. Fordham. You may go inside and see Mr. Usher. Thank you kindly. Lovely. So, a private investigator, are you? That's right. Miles Fordham is my name. Jonas Usher, a pleasure to make your acquaintance. Pleasure's all mine. So, it would seem that Miss Lathan has shuffled off the mortal coil, as it were. I think that's Dave Gilbert again. I'm sorry to say that is indeed the case. 
Please come in, have a seat, make yourself comfortable. I only ask that you kindly wash your hands in the basin first, and limit what you touch in here. This one seems a bit on edge, doesn't he? <laughs> Turophobia is a hell of a drug. <laughs> ah, <laughs> I don't have enough room. <laughs> Adds a nice bit of color to the room. Is there anything more boring than books on law? Just reading the titles is making me drowsy. Usher seems to like keeping his guests at a distance. Don't touch me! Stern-looking lady. Judging by how full these bottles are, Usher doesn't indulge much. What a waste. Thank you, Mr. Fordham. I appreciate your cooperation. I wonder if you get an achievement for not doing that. <laughs> Don't get carried away with the hand washing. Or you might end up like Usher. Mr. Usher, I have some questions for you. Touch all your and things. hopefully I have your answers. Again with the mutton chops. Complete with, with, uh, with mustache, too. How long have you been practicing law, Mr. Usher? Usher and Price has been operating since 1805. I took over from my father 15 years ago. The stress hasn't helped my heartburn, I can tell you that. Why, just last night I was tossing and turning because I couldn't stand the burning in my throat. That's why I've got these bags under my eyes, you know. Ah, yes. And Mr. Price? He's still here, although I think he'll probably be retiring soon as well. But the law firm has done well over the years. And I have a feeling it'll do even better in the years to come. Oh? Why is that? We're currently beginning a group litigation against Royal Maverick for the Lygia disaster. I'm confident that we'll recover quite a significant sum for the families of those killed. You weren't by chance affected by the disaster, were you? Thankfully, I wasn't, no. Shame. You could have joined the class action and done quite well when we win. You know, I always thought we detectives made our living off human tragedy. <laughs> oh, please. Class action, you're gonna get, like, ten cents. <laughs> Mr. Usher, I've noticed from your rules and habits that you seem to have a particular aversion to germs. Why is that, if I may ask? Uh, I've been ill most of my life, Mr. Fordham. I was a sickly child, and unfortunately my condition hasn't improved with age. It's a miracle I'm still alive. That's <laughs> why I'm so careful about exposing myself to germs. I see. How's my color? Do I look pale to you? Uh, not particularly. I saw myself in the mirror this morning and thought I looked a bit peaked. Also, my leg has been hurting more than usual, which has been cause for concern. Nah, you've really done it, Miles. Ahem. <clears throat> yes, well, moving on. So he's a hypochondriac as well. What can you tell me about Desiree Lathan? She was a lovely woman. I'm saddened to hear of her unfortunate passing. How long had you been her attorney? She retained me some ten years ago, I believe. That's quite a long time. Yes, I remember I had just gotten over about a melancholia and been able to work in nearly a month. I didn't think I'd make it out of that, but luckily things took a turn for the better. Miss Lathan came to see me, and I've served as her attorney ever since. Would you say Miss Lathan is a wealthy woman? Indeed I would. Her estate is worth a significant sum. Of course, you understand that this is confidential information, so I cannot tell you the exact amount. Fair. Yes, of course. Can you think of anyone who may have wanted to harm Miss Lathan? No, I can't. What makes you think that someone actually killed her? It seems the most plausible explanation. Miss Lathan was getting on in years. It's likely she may have developed a case of pneumonia. That's the most common killer of the elderly, you know. I had it when I was younger. Most unpleasant. Constant coughing, spitting up phlegm, rattling in the lungs. Thankfully, I made a full recovery. But supposing that was the cause of death, how would it explain the fact that her body was completely burned? She was a smoker. Perhaps she was having a cigarette when she died and dropped it on the bed, causing it to catch fire. I found no cigarette butts at the crime scene. I'm merely offering my opinion, Mr. Fordham. You can take it or leave it. I think we should leave it. <laughs> I found this letter in Miss Lathan's bedroom, which mentions that she recently changed her will. Could you tell me a bit more about the circumstances surrounding this change? That's not an uncommon occurrence. People change their wills all the time. Relatives and friends fall in and out of favor constantly. Had Miss Lathan made changes to her will previously? <sighs> no, this was the first time. 
What change did she make, exactly? Just a change to her beneficiary. Nothing out of the ordinary. And when did this change occur? About four months ago, if I recall correctly. Yes, it was definitely in June, because I'd been in bed with a nasty stomach flu at the end of May. That was no fun, let me <laughs> tell you. I think I lost nearly six pounds from the constant trips to the WC. <laughs> Couldn't keep a thing down, and whatever did stay down soon came out the other end, if you get my meaning. I'd say his meaning is regrettably impossible to avoid. <laughs> I, I will agree, though. I, I had a stomach bug once myself, and it was no fun. Thankfully, it was mercifully short. Who did Miss Lathan name as her new beneficiary? Mr. Fordham, please! You know I couldn't possibly tell you that. There is such a thing as attorney-client privilege. Tell mm. <laughs> me I'll sneeze on you. <laughs> Do you not find it suspicious, Mr. Usher, that Miss Lathan died under such mysterious circumstances only four months after naming a new beneficiary? You said yourself she was wealthy. Does it not make sense that someone might have wanted her inheritance? I suppose it's not entirely out of the question. Right. So tell me the name of Miss Lathan's beneficiary so I can determine if this was, in fact, a murder. Very well. It was a man named Roger DeVay. Do you have any information on where I can find him? Who that? Only his address. It's 775 Pumblechook Place in Chumley. Pumblechook. That'll do nicely. Thank you, Mr. Usher. Pumblechook. <laughs> Thank you for your help, Mr. Usher. The pleasure is all mine, Mr. Fordham. Bumble joke. <laughs> That's my new favorite name. Thankfully, there's nothing else to ask him about right now. Can we please leave? Bumble joke. <laughs> nothing more to ask him right now. All right, off to Bumble joke place. <laughs> Oh. Did Usher give us the wrong address? This should be 775, but there's no building here. Huh. Well, this is going to be hilarious, I'm sure. These aren't in such bad shape, really. As far as the chum goes, this is one of the nicer areas. Bubble joke. Hey. That's just like the one we had when I was a boy. <laughs> Good old Rusty. He served us well. <laughs> Doesn't look like much, but I bet it keeps the rain off. Assuming there's no wind. I used to draw funny pictures of rich people on walls too when I was a kid. Never did a lick of good, but it would always make me feel better. Yeah, those aren't half bad. Too bad they aren't finished. Hmm, I wonder if they're gonna be used to keep the fire going. Oh. I bet this is the dude who did the, the portrait of, um, of Desiree. Yeah, those are... Mm, no. By chum standards, that's practically a four-poster. Uh, excuse me. Yeah? And... Is this 775 Pumblechook Place? Oil paints. Yeah, it would be. The building were still here. Oh, I see. Might I ask you a few questions? You can ask. That might be Francisco, Francisco Gonzalez, actually. <laughs> Not sure, though. What's your name, sir? Me? I'm Herman. Herman Shaw. How long have you Maybe been living not. here? Oh, I've been here for ages. Since before the building got condemned and was torn down. They pretty much forced us out, you see, but a couple of us came back and set up here. Seemed like a good idea. I had nowhere else to go. That's not so bad. Maybe not. Except for when it rains. And I guess we'll have to bundle up a bit more when it gets cold. But other than that, it's like the place was still standing. <laughs> There's some of that classic chum ingenuity. But maybe it's just delusion. Do you know Roger DeVay? No, of course I know him. He lives here with me. He does? Well, whenever he decides to come home, anyway. Rest of the time, I suspect he finds a way to sleep at his job. Me, I'd do the same, except I can't stand the smell of the horses. Do you know where Mr. DeVay works? Nah, he never told me. Hmm. 
What happened to this place? Why was it condemned? The building was old, in a pretty sad state, so the inspectors came by and said it was unfit for living. There was a whole lot of us here. Most were able to pick up and go, but a few of us stayed. Why don't you go to a workhouse? You wouldn't be asking if you'd ever been inside one. It's wall-to-wall -wall people, children crying, sick folk coughing all over you. But there's plenty of that out here, too. Well, sure, but out here, there's freedom. <laughs> Nobody telling you what to do except the odd copper. Not even many of them in this neighborhood. Besides, this is my home. Just because it's missing a few walls don't mean I ought to abandon it. His voice actor is driving me nuts. He sounds really familiar and I can't place him. <laughs> it's the accent. It's messing me up. You look somewhat familiar. Didn't I see you protesting outside the Harris Construction Yard? Yeah, I was there. What of it? Were you affected by the Ligia disaster? Well, nobody I know was killed, if that's what you mean. So, why were you protesting the construction of the Lenore? Well, that Devons fella promised he'd buy us a meal if we stood in the <laughs> crowd. And for a free meal, I'd do just about anything. Oh, is that so? Do you know a woman named Desiree Lathan? Nah, I don't know many women. They're not too fond of my company. Can't imagine why. I don't understand why. I, I always try to be a perfect gentleman. Guess I just don't got the charm. Oh. <clears throat> I asked Roger to give me a few pointers. He's a big hit with the ladies, you know. Is that right? Oh, yeah. He no sooner looks at them than they're falling at his feet. A real natural, that one. Never brings it back here, though. Always winds up staying with him. Getting a free meal and a soft bed out of it. Ah, well. The bohemian lifestyle ain't for everyone. Maybe someday my luck will change. I'm sure it will change the day he decides to take a bath. I thank you for your time. Maybe give us a shilling or two for the trouble? I'll consider it. Yeah, I mean, I gave a shilling to that shadowy dude in the doorway. Why not give a shilling to this guy who gave me this nice information? Best not to bother him any further. He's got a hard enough time of it as it is. Oh, come on. I want to give him some money. All right. So locate Roger DeVay. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, I guess not. <laughs> Don't suppose you might know got where he is. Upton? Yes. Mm, no. That's it. Better get. Maybe uh. How about Nothing you? Nothing new to. No. Okay. Uh, maybe this lady might know him. Miss Robineau? Oh, it's you again. Have you come to ask me more questions? Yes, if you wouldn't mind. No, no. Oh, damn. Well, I'll compliment her anyway. <laughs> Can I just say you've got the most radiant smile I've ever seen? Oh, why, that's very sweet of you, Mr. Fordham. It's true. Not many women your age still have all their teeth intact. I, I beg your pardon? Uh... I didn't know you were such a master of the high kick, Miles. <laughs> you got your foot in your mouth in record time. <laughs> I, I, I just meant... You know what? Never mind. Thanks for your time. I'll let you get back to your drink. <laughs> Thanks, sweetheart. We'll just pretend I never said that. <laughs> hmm... Perhaps, perhaps Addie has, uh... Ah, home at last. Hello. Decided to speak with me again. You've mucked up things enough with her no, for now. Okay. Enjoy your reading. Don't work your... She's usually a good uh, go-to when I'm... When I've exhausted my leads. <laughs> Would
We haven't got nothing else. Hmm. Nothing more to ask her about right now. Leave her to her uh, friends. <laughs> don't think you're gonna have anything to do to say. Welcome back, Mr. Fordham. I don't think there's anything. No, nope. I'll be going. May the. I don't think that. Hmm. Oh, I can't talk to Upton anymore. Well, that sucks. Best not to ball. Hey, that's. I used to never did a. Kate Roger DeVay, investigate the Gascon Supper Club. So there's probably something at the Supper Club I haven't seen yet, or haven't figured out. Roger DeVay. Is there anything, like, further over here, maybe? Does the screen scroll? No? The bridge to Lyon? Hmm. That painting... These are all. These are all. I may have more questions for you later. I can scarcely contain my excitement. I don't. Hmm. What am I missing? Wait. Um. Wait a minute. Let's see if I can uh, poke around the crime scene again. I'm afraid I need to have another look inside Miss Lathan's room, Officer Kane. All right, but please be quick about it. Good, I didn't have to argue with him this time. That's a nice portrait of Miss Lathan. Too bad it was damaged by the fire. The area where the artist's signature should be has been singed and is unreadable. Uh, too bad. But the date is still legible. It's from this year. Hmm. I can't take like a sample of the painting or anything, can I? Or the paint? Nothing else of... Nothing else of interest in there. Miss Lathan's half-written article about igniting the fires within. Pity we'll never be able to know how it ends. Doesn't look as though this fireplace has been used in a long time. I suppose we can rule it out as the source. The flames must have been... F looks like this one... Nothing else of interest in there. Just a pile of ashes. They can't tell us much more than we already know. I don't think Desiree... Bill? What? I don't think there's much... Alas, come to think of it? Yeah, I don't think there's anything else I can tell by... There's a tattoo on... This one's clean. There's... Dancing through life. The 
have to hand. Definitely two. Hmm. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna need to get a sample of like some some oil paint or something, but where would I get that? Yeah, those aren't. Hmm. I wonder if they're going to be used to keep the fire going. Hmm. By chunk. By. Ch hey. Best. Can't talk to him anymore. Doesn't look like. Um. I feel like he might have said something about something that. Maybe I wasn't paying attention to enough, and I missed something important. But I can't repeat conversations, unfortunately, so that's... That's annoying. Um, but if he had given me, like, a lead or something, it would have been... It, it would be in my casebook. sure where to look next. No one else I can talk to has anything else to say. Wait a second. Got a moment? Yeah. No, I'm not ready to wrap up the case. That's it. Better get back. Sorry. Is there anything in your bucket? Seems to be empty for now. That's most definitely a good thing. It says for now. I wonder if it. I wonder if it will not be empty at, at some point. An empty petri dish isn't going to be of much use to our experiment. Best put something in it. Miles, the petri dish is empty. No point adding the reagent to it now. Hmm. Looks like ammonium chloride. Won't be of much use to us in this experiment. Oh, um... Hmm. I also wonder if some of the books maybe at the uh, Spectre Society might have more information that might be relevant. I kind of doubt it. I already read through them all last case and they didn't really have anything useful, I don't think. Welcome but back, Mr. Fordham. But, um, maybe. I never much cared for all that mystic stuff. Why should your life be dictated by a bunch of cards? Those are some creepy twin girls. I could see a passing resemblance to Miss Maxwell, actually. There's quite a few members in this group. Oh, can't look at the guest book. Must be for the great man once. He's dead now. What a ridiculous. <laughs> I think I've seen one of these. It's a spirit board. Well, I've got a message. For That's probably. Astral projection, metempsychosis, the art of the seance, giant squid. Voodoo. No. Mediums. Uh, 
lies beyond the great veil. Contagious combustion. Tarot. Spirits into ether. It's nice of Miss Mackin coming from me. Hmm. No, that didn't get me anywhere. Well, but it's about time I stop for the night. Um, so we will try to puzzle this out more tomorrow. And maybe what I'll do is I'll go over my footage and uh, re-watch that um, conversation with um, the uh, with the guy, the homeless guy, because I feel like there was something I missed um, when I was talking to him, and maybe that'll help. I don't know, but. Uh, We'll see. We'll, see. Um, we'll, uh, we'll look into that more next week. And um, ah, my hair is going crazy. <laughs> it does that sometimes. Uh, so yeah, we'll. Um... Oop! I will forget how to type. So yeah, for now I will send you over to someone else. Let's see. Not a lot of people streaming right now, actually. That's slightly unfortunate. Let's see. Who else? Who, who can I find? <laughs> Ooh, there's some Final Fantasy IX going on. There's some Fantasy Star Four going on. Life is Strange. Life is Strange is always good. Let's let's go let's go visit Taco Salad. I've been rating him a lot these days because he plays good games, so may as well. So yeah, um, I will see you guys tomorrow for Reseteer. And uh, next week, uh, more Quest for Infamy, more uh, on Monday, more uh, Lamplight City, <laughs> forgot the name of the game I'm playing, on Tuesday, and more Reseteer next Wednesday, presumably. Uh, so yeah. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. And please enjoy the rest of your night. Pumblechook. <laughs>